long time. Hey, Kai. Yeah. If highly educated immigrants come to Canada, don't you think their education needs to be used? You gotta try real, real hard. I try hard. But I guess I gotta try hard. To give us the, the rules which we have to follow to get this uh, chance. Uh, I found it, it lied. I mean, uh, on the paper, it will have to pass some few exams, like the evaluation exam, and there is another two qualifying exams. After all of that, you have been now supposed to be uh, qualified in terms of licensure. But in terms of um, having the training program, it's another issue because the uh, you have to apply for whatever residency you want. I mean, if you want to go, like any new graduates, to choose whatever residency program you you prefer, you have this opportunity. But the problem that it's it's um, comparatively few, and uh, in, in relation to the actual need doctors in Canada. I mean, if you are talking about the long for uh, having an appointment to see your doctor. The person between um, uh, the, the doctor to the you know in Canada actually, and at the, uh, at, the, uh, at the same time you you are, you, are, you you have already in uh, in Canada a lot of doctors are coming as a migrant. So I think there is something missed here between uh, these people who already um, I mean came to Canada. And the starting uh, an individual basis, I mean one by one, everyone has to uh, start by himself just to go through this long process and if he's lucky he can get something uh, like family doctor. I, I, I don't want to talk about the high specialty like ophthalmology or uh, any uh, other kind of surgical uh, specialties, but in general uh, there, uh, there has to be some a specific and clear route for those doctors to be qualified at the end. It's sad and at the same time I'm unfortunate, I mean for Canada and as well as for the immigrants because as immigrants we, we all uh, came here, um, we, do, we would like to do our part in contributing for uh, in terms of uh, giving Canada back, like they, they accepted us as immigrants, so in return we'd like to pay them back by contributing in as much as what, um, based on what we've learned and what we've been accustomed to doing back home. So, and then when we come here, we find out that uh, it's very difficult, it's a bit hard to get into those uh, jobs that you used to be doing back home and then you're just limited to doing skilled labor, skilled jobs. So basically, yeah, it's unfortunate for both the immigrants and uh, I think for Canada too. It's such a waste. Canada actually, in, uh, for the medical uh, uh, professions in general, and this uh, I mean, it's only like a dream for anyone all over the world to come to Canada and to be uh, graduated as a medical student or to have a residency and they may think that this is uh, the, the highest level in the, all over the world. But the problem here that we are in a certain um, criteria, we are just being already graduated from our, our own countries. and. We, we just want to be involved in the system. I think uh, I think it's both ways, both Canada and the immigrant means. Canada in the sense that we're bringing all this skilled and professional laborers into Canada, hoping to contribute into their progress. And it's also a win-win situation for the immigrants, like they'll be able to enjoy the quality of life that Canada offers, like uh, health care and much safer environment than compared from back home. So I think it's a win-win situation it's supposed to be for both Canada and immigrants.
racism or discrimination. I I hate to think about it, but I don't know. Once in a while, it comes to your mind like maybe they're just catering, or they just they would just like to cater to Canadian graduates. But still, I don't want to think about it. I just want to keep trying and trying until they come up with a program of how to integrate all these available uh, intellectuals or markets into their system and not expecting them then when we come here they expect that so they expect everybody to have that Canadian experience already uh, which which they most of the time do like in their exams and everything they expect us to answer them based on Canadian experience which obviously we don't have <laughs> yeah, yeah so I think they have to invest more in this and then uh, secondly I don't want to think that they're just discriminating or anything like that and they're just keeping the market solely to Canadians and everything like that uh, make for them uh, an individual program just to follow if there is any weakness and certain parts uh, you can enforce it for uh, of course yeah. um, I hopefully um, and I wish actually for myself to uh, succeed in this way and to get um, what I actually used to do like uh, ophthalmology job, ophthalmology boss. It basically whatever. it goes down to the government having a program specifically to integrate all these immigrants into their, uh, what they were screened, uh, what they were screened before in, the, in their respective embassies back home because we were screened based on what we know and, uh, and our, based on our education yeah. and then we were screened based on that and then when we come here they don't have a program for us to integrate into their system yeah. basically they're just giving us exams year in and year out and then expecting us to have that Canadian experience based on what <laughs> where we came from yeah. which I don't know so basically generally it's putting up a program to integrate them, like having uh, at, at least a year of supervised training for all these graduates. Imagine the number of positions available that are being untapped right now by the government and they're just basing it on the exams and uh, they qualify based on uh, I don't know what. So yeah, and then we they keep telling us there's a number of a shortage of um, doctors and nurses here but here are the immigrants and they don't have a program of how to integrate them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sure. keep taking the exams and then while you're taking the exams you can't go back home because you have these res residency limitations otherwise you lose your uh, permanent residency so even if you go back home and then continue practicing you can't so you're stuck here and then you end up like you don't, you're not supposed to be out of practice for more than three years Otherwise, they won't accept you. It's either you go back home, continue your practice, and then come back here again. So all those sorts of things. Yeah. So it's it's hard for uh, permanent for immigrants like yeah. there's of the, this residency issue too. So you have to fulfill that residency number of days that you have to stay in Canada, so you won't lose your immigrant status.